I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we have the pleasure of welcoming Terrence Dingwall, author of The Tomb of Ding, a captivating collection of anecdotes from his daring and adventurous life. From motorcycles to planes, from colonial Kenya to New Zealand, this author shares his unique experiences, including stories from his father's remarkable life during World War II and the Mau Mau emergency in Kenya. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Terrence, great to see you here today. Good to see you too, bud. Um, you are quite an exciting guy. Motorcycles, planes, the whole bit. This is a, a great story you wrote. What made you decide to put it down on paper? Um, when you look at your parents, you look very carefully at their life stories and you value them uh, for, for everything that they've done for you in your life. Um, they've sacrificed everything to bring you here. And uh, in some cases, you, you look back and say, well, what happens if they fall off the perch? Mm. And there's nothing left, just a few memories with your, with your children, a few old photos in the photo album. And uh, when you fall off the perch, your grandchildren will pick up the same photo album and look it up and say, who the heck's that? Uh, you know, where's that photo taken? Who, who, who was it? And uh, that sort of thing makes you sort of think because you, you, you pick up a, a box of old photos and you leaf through them and, and, 90% of them, you don't know who the heck they are, when they were taken, and uh, important things like that. So I thought, well, I've got to write down um, what my parents done and uh, get you know suck all the bloody goodness out of them while, while they're while they're with us. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've lost both of them, mm -hmm. and uh, my better half has lost her, her parents too, just just due to old age. And so, um, if you haven't written something down. It's lost forever. Yeah. So it's it's my legacy, yep. their legacy that, that that should be handed on to the grandchildren, handed on to posterity. Um, when you look at the, the old stories of the Aboriginals here in Australia, uh, it's handed down by word of mouth. What happens to the poor old bloody the 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 let's call it the current custodian? Get the tree branch fall on it or something, and basically you lose you lose everything. It's lost. When you write something down, it's there. It can be handed on, and it's saved. And that's a that's to honour your parents and to 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 give them the the just respect that they do for for their um, bringing you here in the in the world. Um, exactly. It adds context to everything, to your story, to your children's story, to your grandchildren's story. So it's great that you put it down. Your book provides a fascinating glimpse into colonial life in Kenya and New Zealand as well. Tell us a little bit about how these diverse cultural experiences influenced your perspective on life and adventure. When you brought up in a very small community um, and you never go anywhere uh, what is the world to you 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 uh, um, have a very limited view of the outside world that limited view biases your internal thinking biases your you know your conception of everything that goes on around you um, I'm especially privileged because uh, living in the Seychelles, then, then uh, Kenya, then New Zealand, and Singapore, and Australia, and even visiting you know, other parts of the world, you see different cultures, different languages, mm. and attitudes, uh, different religions, and uh, each one of those you should absorb with all your heart because uh, every new experience you come across um, helps you to expand your mind and to, to see other people's point of view. There's no just one one world view. Um, you know, look at Christianity, for instance, or Islam, or uh, Hinduism, whatever. Each has a different world view, and mm -hmm. that world influences how you think, how you approach the world, and everything. Um, so, 
uh, I, I sort of said, well, I, I've been a very lucky man um, to to go through the old uh, um, stories with my mum, you know, sit her down and say, look, mum, you know, what did you do when you were a girl? And I asked dad the same thing. Um, with dad, it's, it's especially difficult because he'd been through five years of bloody World War II mm. and um, uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome is a new word they put for it nowadays, but all I saw was dad didn't want to speak to speak about his uh, war experiences, you know, a typical child. Dad, dad, how many bloody el- how many blooming elephants have you shot? How many Germans have you shot? Right. That's a child's attitude. Um, right. you, know, you spent 90% of your time bloody cowering from bloody shells and bloody mines blowing up around you and your mates being lost all around you. So that 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 destroys your your confidence in uh, being able to speak about it without exposing the stress inside you. You you um, many years ago, uh, and Dad was still alive. He was asked to speak uh, to school kids about his experience during World War II on uh, on Anzac Day, um, to try and give the kids a perspective. But he said, "Terry, I can't handle it unless the kids write down the questions." So I can actually look at each question and actually um, it's called a form in his mind that the response to it without breaking up. Yeah, if someone asks you, how did you feel at your mother's funeral or something like this, it's the closest thing I can say to you is that you you don't want to speak about it because of the, the raw emotions that come up. Um, they're just waiting to, to, to come up. So you don't want to be surprised. You just want to have a a little, a little cushion. Yeah. Between your experience. Absolutely. You know, during your twenty years in the RNZAF, you encountered many adventures, many mishaps. Can you tell us what was one of your most memorable experiences from this time and its significance in your life? Well, at this time, uh, it's probably significant. I spent uh, six months in the Sinai Desert. Um, playing bloody checkers uh, on, on the peacekeeping force between Egypt and Israel. Mm. Uh, um, basically uh, on the edge of the Gaza Strip, this quote. <laughs> and uh, all the shit that's going on over there right now. Um, yeah. Back then, wasn't it wasn't um, anywhere near as uh, volatile as it is going on now. And uh, basically, we're just the umpire in a sort of a game between savage war and faction just saying, hey, you threw the first stone, no matter yeah. how you did. And that's all, all our job was, an honest, um, impartial observer between the two sides. And mm. uh, it's especially significant to me. He says, well, I did my little part. Didn't have to fire a shot in anger. Didn't have to do anything except bloody have a good time in Cairo and uh, Tel Aviv. Um, but uh, peacekeeping forces, per se, you know I mean? Four sods on the bloody border between uh, between any two warring factions. Uh, not a nice place to be if something breaks out. Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. What are you hoping readers take away from the tomb of Ding? Is there a message you want them to uh, take away, or a uh, feeling you want to convey through your life story? Well, I must correct you. The tome. Oh, the tome. <laughs> That's my pronunciation. It sounds like the tomb. <laughs> I think you did, mate. Uh, a tome is just really a, a really thick book. You go back <laughs> to the Middle Ages and you look at the the uh, Bibles, which are so expensive and printed on paper and so many things are, you know, on, on leather and bloody uh, expensive as heck. They yeah. change they change the book the books to the to the church to stop the bloody church being ripped off. Yeah. You know, so, because. Uh, a tome is just a really thick book. Yeah, and yeah, my, I, I know. It's just my pronunciation. My, my, sorry. My, my book, my book is is uh, by my one finger typing stand. <laughs> I'm the same way. I type like I use two fingers. I got you beat. Two fingers, damn you! Twice as fast. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Is there hope? Is there something you'd like uh, the folks who read it to take away from it? Well, life lessons. Um, the whole uh, idea is. It's all little anecdotes. Yeah. Every every page, you just flick it open to any 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 place, and basically you come to a little a little life story. 
It could be about motorbikes. It could be about animals. It could be about anything. Mm. And the people who have uh, given my book to um, all say the same thing. I said to them, well, pick it open in any page. And that little thing there is is, is a complete story in itself. It, it, it's a standalone story. It's sort of like a reader's digest. Mm. <laughs> you sort of you condense a little tiny story into one bit. So I've got right. two books. I've got the original big book and my book of poetry. So there's two different things. This is basically um, a compendium of everything, like uh, um, uh, it's called autobiography, motorbikes, every damn thing. Mm -hmm. But the poetry book is the one that's um, condensed. Every poem is just a condensed story, just it's like bloody condensed milk. You just keep getting rid of all the rubbish till you arrive at this one little tiny core story. Stick the ends to match up. and uh, yeah. That's wonderful. Like you said, it's kind of a reader's digest, if you will, of uh, your life story, which is a wonderful story. Terrence Dingwall's story is put down on paper, a series of anecdotes, a series of stories, and a series of poems in one of his books. It is called The Tome of Ding. It's a captivating collection of his daring and adventurous life from motorcycles to planes to Kenya to New Zealand. It's a great story. You'll reflect upon his life. You'll reflect upon your own life. And you'll see that uh, a lot of us have a lot in common. Um, and uh, it's important to put your story down on paper. And we're very, very glad that Terrence put his story down on paper because it's very, very entertaining and informative. Terrence, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you very much. Oh, Are my pleasure. Well, I'll send someone after you. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds great. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time. On Spotlight. Okay.